Folks, if you need to know, you came to the right place. Hello. It's Santa Clarita's hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. You're listening to the Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John. It is Friday, July 25th, 2014. I don't like it when people say 2014. I like 2014. John, what do you think? (laughs) You're picky. (laughs) Anyway, folks, this is the Radio Digest version of the Santa Clarita Gazette and Free Classified. We are your weekly alternative to the daily paper here in town for all you need to know to be in the know. I guess you have CDO, right? What's that? It's OCD, but in alphabetical oh, order. Yeah. You know. <laughs> anyway. 2014. 2014. What's the difference? It is, bugs this, me. It? Wow. And see, I thought you'd be in a great mood. You're back from your, your, your short little vacation. You went to the short, beach. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, you time flew out yeah, to okay. Tucson. Yeah. I went you, to t- wait a minute. Uh-oh. Wait. Uh, I can't say the word in the radio. Blank minute. I went to Tucson yesterday just for the day to take care of some family business. On the way, it usually takes me an hour to get to LAX. It took me two hours to get to LAX. I almost missed the flight. And why do you think traffic was so bad on the 405 in and around the Beverly Hills area? What time of day? It was right when the one guy was getting into town. So it was rush hour anyway? No, it was in the morning when, oh, it, in when, the morning? when an influential person in our country was flying into town. Oh, uh, jeez, I know where you're yeah, going with this. Yeah, uh, It's interesting. Okay, that- no, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Usually what he does politically-wise bugs the heck out of me. Right. But this was personal. So I didn't think much about it. I get to the airport. I go to Tucson to get my family business done, go back to the Tucson airport to fly back. Every flight in and out of L.A. was delayed for two or three hours because of the president. Well, don't you think, I mean, were you afraid to fly? Why would I be afraid All to fly? All the planes dropping down? Oh, that's down? another thing. Did you? No. What? Oh, go ahead, Doug. We're on no. the radio. Get it out. No. What? Did you see the uh, video between him and, um, I don't want to talk about it. Well, that's why we're on the radio, so you can talk about it. Okay, we're going to spend the next hour of listening to things that Doug doesn't want to no, talk about. because I don't want to start yelling. My wife doesn't like it when I yell on the radio. You're not you don't yell. Really you, can, you, can, you can express your views in a calm, orderly fashion. All I know is when Reagan, when the Korean jet airliner got shot down, what, 1980, what, four, whatever it was, whatever. Yeah, yeah, he stopped what he was doing. And headed back to Washington. Hang on, hang on. What? No, check your facts. He didn't do that. Did you know this? I was actually looking at that because I heard the speech. Maybe you know, I just you, assumed. You that. hear all the speeches, and, and it's 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 probably one of the best closing arguments I've heard. It, it should have been in a courtroom. You're it was talking brilliant. about Reagan's, Reagan's speech, right. where he pointed out there was a crime against humanity. It, uh, the, the, for people who may not remember, South Korea plane uh, airliner left, I think it was Alaska, right. flying back to South Korea, right. crossed about 100 miles off course into the Soviet Union, was shot down by a Soviet military plane. Right. Okay. 263 people, I think, 283 right. people, mm-hmm. something like that, passed away because of the accident, because of the crime against humanity. Reagan's speech was fantastic. Period. End of story. Misconception, though, is he didn't drop everything. You know where he was when this happened? He was in his ranch in Santa Barbara. He didn't want to leave, he didn't want to overreact. Okay? okay, and I don't have a problem with that. Obama did the same thing. Now I think oh, after the the initial period of okay, let's get our facts together, went through, the the, the cons- comparison stops dramatically at that point in time. Because what did he do when he found out about it? Well, when, Mr. Obama, when, when Mr. Obama found out about it, he continued on with the schedule. Right, and what was the schedule? Uh, probably some fundraisers to to, yeah. to aggravate and who, you. When he goes to these fun, like when he flew into L.A. yesterday, who paid for that? Oh, there's no question. Who paid for that? Th- th- thank and you. it was a fundraiser fundraiser for one particular political party. Well, that's, that party should pay the expenses of him flying in to raise money for welcome, that. Party. Welcome to the Supreme Court ruling. That yeah. that one just dr- drives me up the wall. But okay, to sit there and say, oh, he should have canceled everything. No, Reagan didn't cancel everything. And I don't want, my, I don't know about you, but I don't want my president to overreact and cancel everything at every drop of the hat. I want them to have, they have people. The president has people. That's the coolest part about being president, from my standpoint, is you'd have people to do that. I want people to investigate. I want to know what the facts are. Then I want to react. I don't want to react before I know all the facts. Okay? And I don't have a problem with that. The problem I have is that after they knew the facts, Reagan's response was appropriate. Obama, you hear crickets chirping. Yeah, what did he say? Obama said it was a tragedy. Oh, it was a tragedy. Tragedies are earthquakes. Tragedies are acts of God. It's a tragedy the Redskins don't win the Super Bowl more often. <laughs> okay, it'll be a tragedy if the Forever. Orioles don't win the American League East. Okay? And even that's not a tragedy. As long as they're above if, 500, it'll be okay. If the Dodgers don't win the West, that's a tragedy. Uh, but still. I know. You can't, you can't compare the two. John, we could talk all day. I, could, I want a president who acts presidential. 
in oh, some dude. form or manner. I mean, this thing with Israel, we didn't even uh, talk about this in show prep, one, yeah. but I, I, uh, that's, I, 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 boy, that's, that, that, that <laughs> seems to be Obama's response, too. Yeah. Did you see where, where the prime minister of Israel goes, hey, I'm, you know, when you're a leader, you're a man. A man's got to do what a man's got to do. Yeah. A country's got to do, do what a country's, country's got to do. do. And what have we done? Nothing. We're not even supporting Israel. No. Howard Stern, of all people, came out and said, hey, if you don't support Israel, you're not supporting America. I mean, John Kerry, our Secretary of State, off mic when he was on Fox News Sunday, he st- you could hear him criticizing the military of Israel. I think Howard Stern should be Secretary of State. Yeah. Uh, I got nothing after you that. You got me on that one. <laughs> I you got, got Doug, me on that one. I got one. Doug speechless. <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> mark this down, Peter. Mark the tape, because that was But you know the conclusion I've came to in our 20 seconds we have left in this Uh-oh. segment? A conclusion. I, I, my conclusion is that our president at this point in time doesn't care. He's almost being... Um, um, Lame duck. Not that. What's the word? Spiteful. He said, you, you know what? I know I, if I go to these two fundraisers today, I'm going to get criticized like crazy, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, that could be. I think that that's, could And be. he said, you know what? I've made these decisions. I'm just going to do them. I don't, well, I don't, you know. I understand the whole presidential let's not overreact, but I don't know. Uh, uh, let's overreact. Yeah, okay. Anyway, okay. All right. Acting is not necessarily overreacting. That's the key right there. There you go. All right. You're listening to Gazette Radio with John and Doug. Oh, wait a minute. That's Doug and John, isn't Thank it? Thank you. <laughs> On AM 1220 KHTS, we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, to Santa Cruz's hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. You're listening to the Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John, uh, the Gazette Radio Digest version. Something of the same. a little peppy there, Doug. I'm Come on, trying. man. Get up <laughs> when a I bit. get peppy, I stumble uh, on uh, my words. I'm yeah, so anyway, I don't really care what we're here for. Who's the news director of KHTS these days? Pop uh, quiz. Who is it? <laughs> Mr. Peter Marquez? Marquez? The only. Peter Marquez? The, 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 okay, I'll take it. the <laughs> irreplaceable. Oh. What was your name again? Perry Smith. Perry Smith. Mr. That's Perry right. Smith, the news director of KHDS. <laughs> the unforgettable. The unforgettable. <laughs> Who's when he's willing and we can talk him into it. He comes on our show to talk about the, uh, the, highlight, the news highlights of the week. I'm willing to donate one tenth of my salary to get you on every week. Highlights and even the lights. One tenth of one tenth, what? One tenth, baby. Wow. That's, I should get a sixth, though, because I'm on I'll for get you, all I'll get you a sixth. I'll I get mean, you a sixth. Let's I, be I, fair I was, if I'm going to negotiate. All right, so your top five stories. Top five stories in no particular order, in except that the last... Ex- yeah. Obviously, We're Santa Clarita Valley. Yeah. That's what we yeah. talk about here. Um, no particular order, except the last one is my favorite one. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, Chiquita Canyon Expansion Project. Most people don't know that there's a giant landfill in Castaic where all of our trash goes. Oh, Peter, 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 Peter knows. our sound engineer, Peter knows, apparently and Peter is lives well aware. Right by it. <laughs> um, so whatever you might notice about it, you're probably going to notice a little bit more because they're uh, almost doubling their size. And the daily loads that are going there, they're, they're slowly ramping that up. So that's going to double um, if their approved plan or if their plan gets approved. You're going to see a lot more trash trucks. And that's when uh, the county going to approve it? Right. Yeah. Ideally, it's a county planning issue. Um, the area is not in city limits. It's about three miles west of Interstate 5. There's a huge landfill there. Most of the, uh, some of the controversy from it from Santa Clarita Valley residents is that most of the trash going there does not come from our area. We don't sustain an entire landfill by ourselves. A lot of it comes from L.A., so people are saying, you know, hey, why are you Santa Clarita Valley? Dumping? Mm-hmm. But it's been our dumping ground. They're expanding the area within the lot that they already have, but you are going to see probably more trucks. So what that means is if you're going to Ventura, it's going to take you longer. Yeah, if you're on that Interstate yeah. 5, 126 intersection, yep. you're going to see a little more traffic, especially in the next two years while they're doing construction, yeah. assuming the plan gets approved. All right. That sounds like fun. Keep moving right along. This one was kind of interesting to me. The, the coroners uh, finally ID'd this murder victim whose body was found dumped in a ditch. Uh, the only reason they found the body was because they were mopping up the pine fire last year. Or no, oh, in March. Yeah, in March. That's 150 right. acres that burned in Gorman where nobody lives in the Angeles National Forest. But the person didn't die from that fire. But the person did yeah. not die from that fire. They were, they were placed there. In some suspicious circumstances. That's why you always dump somebody in a landfill. <laughs> <Come> exactly. <on. laughs> and you know they, I, these two stories connect. And you didn't even know that. <laughs> the, I mean, the odds, the odds what against this learn? guy. You know, whoever probably killed this person is like, you got to be kidding me. There was a fire in the, the landfill. Yeah. You don't. Or I dumped the, the dead, dead body. The fire. Why does this stuff always happen to me? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, so we're we're still trying to find out who that is. Um, they haven't released the name publicly because they're still trying to track down the guy's family. But they think the body was there for at least four years before they found wow. it. Wow. So it could be a really cold file. Exactly. A cold case. Exactly. And we've actually been talking, as nobody knows this yet, but we've been talking with an investigator in Florida who's, um, who might 
this the victim might be somebody who's wanted for murder. So we don't what? know. Oh. It might be a little bit of intrigue. This I don't promise kind of too much. Wow. But it's going to be a story that's unfolding, and we'll have more like movie of the week. as soon as it's ready. Um, the Board of Supervisors unanimously approved water use fines. So that's uh. something that might hit everybody's pocket starting August 1st if you're uh, wasting your water. Now, is that going to be um, strictly based on consumption? Do you know? Well, it's it's the uh, the ordinance as it is from the state, in which the county chose to adopt, is prohibiting certain water uses, including washing down driveways and sidewalks, using a hose uh, to wash a car unless it's fitted with a shutoff nozzle, and using potable water in a fountain. Um, but how are they going to police this? Well, that's the thing. That's been the issue. They don't have a you know water cops per se, and they don't have authority. So. Um, there's software coming into plans, and the CLWA is working on something. It might just be like honor system, snitching are system. Ra- are you rat on your <laughs> yeah, neighbor? Rat on, your rat neighbor. on or whatever you want to call wow. it. Um, Why don't they so, just implement fines? I mean, if you reach a certain level of usage, you just pay out the nose. And uh, that might be part of it, too. They're coming. still, they're, yeah, they're, they're going to announce their system in that first week of August, so we're going to know exactly how it's going to shake out when you're hoarding all the water. But you can. <laughs> On a and side the note, so they're being selfish. Right? On a they're side note, did you see where the, the governor um, let uh, the HOAs know across the state they can't find people right. for having brown grass? That was one of the folks things. Yeah, getting, that was a big one. Yeah. And that's just like the first uh, strike across the bow, if you will. There's going to be more, and you're going to pay right. for it out of your pocket if you're wasting water. I mean, they do have ways. Should in, yeah, we, we should invest in um, artificial grass companies. Ooh, there you go. That's good. Yeah. That's good. There you go. Drought-tolerant plants. Drought okay, we got two minutes, so let's keep moving. Um, there was a terrible crash in Acton on Tuesday night. That was real tragic. A child was um, was survived, but his parents, they yeah, believe, are was... were killed in the crash. Um, the grandparents are there, but it's it's a sad foster Did that situation. Start a, uh, a brush fire? No, there was a separate brush fire. But there were there was a string of eight brush fires. Yeah. But you know it was probably a chain getting dragged behind a yeah. truck because they don't you know they're investigating that, but yeah. they're not sure what happened. Okay. Um, where are we at? Four or five? I'm a journalist. I don't do I, math. I, I don't do math. This will be number five. I'll just it, keep it, going. It's been so enjoyable. Oh, well, then if, if, if I've only got one more and we got a minute to go, then i got to talk about this brain surgeon who was cited for, for <laughs> now, smoking marijuana. <laughs> Wait a minute. brain surgeon. <laughs> in front of the Santa Clarita Valley Sheriff Station. A special shout-out goes to this uh, now, young wait, individual. Now, wait. Back up. You need to back up. He's not okay. really a brain surgeon. Right. <laughs> right. He's he was a, a Santa Clarita surgeon. Valley teen. Um, they didn't identify him because he's under 18, and, and, you know, hopefully he learned his lesson about knowing his community. Maybe he wanted to be arrested. And knowing his neighborhood and knowing what so he, he should be putting in glass st- pipes. He was standing but, right out in front of the station? Yeah, and- he, well, to give credit where, you know, credit might not be due, he was in front of an unmarked building. The, the Detectives Bureau, they don't put a big sign out here that says, here's where the detectives work. You know, we solve crimes. They try to keep a low profile intentionally, but they did have a glass wall. And so I would imagine... He was seen by a detective in plain clothes who was approached to him and said, hey, what are you doing? Kid said what he was doing. <laughs> and it was a pretty open and shut case. He didn't realize, you know, detectives usually wear their badges a little bit lower, yeah, so he might not. Probably gonna meet his quota I'm giving this kid easy, credit right? that he didn't see that the kid was, that the, the, the <laughs> gentleman was a detective coming back from court. He thought he was in Seattle. <laughs> but so, yeah. So there is all the news that's fit to broadcast. To broadcast. Wow. Uh, Perry Smith, as always, man, this is... This is uh, Welcome to Santa Clarita. I Ple- guess, pleasure all on my side of the microphone. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Thank you. All right, you're listening it. to Gazette Radio with Doug and John on AM 1220 KHTS. We'll be right back.